No Wi-Fi? No problem. Today we're going to use LoRa to send wireless commands using ESP32. Wi-Fi doesn't always reach where you need it to, but LoRa can, and today I'm going to show you a simple way to wirelessly control devices with LoRa and ESP32, starting with just a button and an LED. Let's begin. Today I'll be using two of the ESP32 S3 development boards. I'll be using two of the RYLR998 LoRa transceiver modules that was sent to me by Rayax Technology as uh, free review items. I'll also be using a 5mm LED, a breadboard, a push button, some jumper wires, a 10K and a 220 ohm resistor. I'm using the ESP32 S3. It's a powerful 3.3 volt microcontroller and this one's sold under the name Freenov, which I'm a big fan of. It's also got uh, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy, but today I'll be using it for our demo with the LoRa module. If you do decide to use this board, you go to the freenove.com website, click on tutorial, and scroll down here and find the board that you have. And they have all the boards, I believe, that it's for sale online. And our board is, I believe this one right here, the WROOM board. So click that, download it, and go to my folder. I would extract the file. It's an executable file. Open the file right here. And what we want to do is install the CH343 driver. And that driver is available for Linux, Mac, or Windows. I'm going to click on Windows. You may already have this if you've used other ESP32 boards or even ESP8266 or any of the boards that use the CH343 USB to serial chip to communicate with your computer. Basically, the chip converts the USB from your computer to UART serial for your ESP32. And without it, your board may not show up and it may not be programmable in the Arduino IDE. So this is an important first step. Be aware that this is a 3.3 volt transceiver. If you apply any more than that, you may damage it. It uses a serial communication protocol called UART, which allows two devices to send and receive data using just two wires. And that'll happen on the TX and RX pins. The TX pin is the transmit that sends data out, and the RX pin is the receive pin that receives data in. And these two devices do need to be operating on the same baud rate. This lower module is capable of long range transmission with high interference immunity with distances of up to 15 or 20 kilometers, but that's gonna be without any interference and an open air line of sight. In urban areas, you can expect shorter ranges of about one and a half to three kilometers just due to obstructions and buildings and stuff. So our pins are ground for ground connection. Then we have the TX and RX pins for UART connection. If you wanna reset your module without cutting power, you can do it manually or through code by using the reset pin. And then there's the VDD pin, which is a 3.3 volt pin. Now it's time to make our connections. We're going to connect ground to ground. The TX will connect to 9, pin 9 on our board. We'll connect the RX pin to pin 10. Our VDD pin will connect to the 3 volt pin on the ESP32. And our 5 millimeter LED will connect to ground. And then the positive pin of that LED will connect to pin 6 using a 100 or 220 ohm resistor. For the transmitter setup, we'll connect ground to ground. The TX pin will be connected to pin 9. RX pin will be connected to pin 10. The VDD pin will be connected again to the 3 volt pin of our ESP32. Our button will be connected to pin 7. It will also be connected to ground using a 10K pull up resistor. And it will be connected to the 3 volt pin of the ESP32. So here's the transmitter code and you can see up at the top we defined our pins. If you look into the setup you can see that I'm using an input pull up. Now this enables an internal pull up resistor that's in the ESP32's GPIO pin. And it keeps the pin high when the button isn't pressed just like a 10K resistor external pull-up would. Just a moment ago, I showed you my diagram that included an external pull-up, and you would use this if you had long wires or you were in an electronically noisy environment, or if you're experiencing false button triggers. I wanted to show you both options, so whichever you decide to choose, typically you only need to pick one. The LoRa setup is absolutely the meat and potatoes of our project when using the RYLR998 modules, because it defines how your devices communicate, and without the correct LoRa setup, your modules can't talk to each other, your messages won't connect to the right address, your frequencies and networks mismatches, and it's just everything breaks. We prompt communication between the two modules using AT commands or AT commands in our code, and an AT command format looks something like this. In our code, you see that our first AT command is for our address, and this is unique to each device. Our second command is for our network ID, and devices here have to have the same network ID to talk to each other. And the third command is for our radio frequency, or RF, and this must be the same on both transmitter and receiver. 
And finally you see a parameter command with a series of values, 12, 7, 1, and 4. Here I've included the AT parameter format, which includes spreading factor, bandwidth, coding rate, and preamble length, along with their value ranges and an explanation for each if you're interested. The AT commands are important for this project because it's the only way you can communicate with the module. Now we don't need any fancy complex libraries because it only listens for serial text commands over UART. Here's another example for you. Now this command would be the same as saying, hey Lore module, send the message off to device address 2. And the message is 3 bytes long. And you'll notice in our code we have a command for both on and off. That takes care of the code for the transmitter. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code for the receiver. You'll notice that the code for the receiver is very similar to the code for the transmitter. Some of the differences for the receiver is that we define an LED pin on pin 6 and the device address in the LoRa configuration is 2, not 1. By looking in the loop, you'll see the roles of our LoRa modules are different. This receiver code listens for incoming serial messages and reacts to them. Our receiver code checks if there's incoming data from the LoRa module, it reads the full message, it looks for the word on in the message, it turns on the LED if the message says on, and turns it off if the message says off. Well that's it for the receiver code. It's actually pretty short, which is nice because it allows your Arduino code to stay clean and easy to build on. Here's a demo for you. It's not quite six kilometers, but I just wanted to show you the connectivity. And it's the, the receiver's on the other side of the room there. I'm gonna press the button here on the transmitter. By the way, the button doesn't wanna stay in the breadboard. It keeps popping out. I'm gonna press the button once. The light comes on, press it again. The LED goes off. And it's pretty consistent. Might need a new button, but it works pretty well here at 25 feet. Something like that. I'll definitely do more projects with this using different boards and different scenarios with different sensors and stuff. Maybe some different obstacles in the way or maybe even a long distance one. We'll just see how it goes, but I'll definitely be revisiting uh, these modules. That's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it by clicking the thumbs up and consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of stuff. Also, share it with somebody else who may find it useful and I'll see you again with another video.